I've mentioned several kinds of exercises that are useful in learning orchestration. Orchestrating Bach chorales for individual families, then for the whole orchestra, transcriptions of piano music, and realizing multiple versions out of simple sketches. Another useful exercise is to create what I call a character glossary. Most composers aim to write expressive music that'll move the listener, creating a strong emotional world. This can take the form of absolute music, program music, film music, or video game music. In all these cases, clear, strong musical character is the goal. Character always results from the interplay of several musical dimensions, like tempo, harmony, register, and of course, timbre. So if we want to project a particular character, we need to ask ourselves, for each of these dimensions, what will best create it? As an example, if you wanted to create something very playful, would slow legato double basses playing very loud be appropriate? No, of course not. You might try something like a light staccato piccolo solo, accompanied by some strings pizzicato. Of course, there are also many other possibilities, but some things, like that double bass idea, simply don't work. Think of the best known beginning in all of classical music, Beethoven's Fifth. It suggests tremendous energy and determination. What gives the music this character? First, the dynamics are very loud. Then there are the insistent repeated notes at a fast, energetic tempo. The long-held notes, the fermatas, give a feeling that the powerful energy is being restrained, under control. From the point of view of orchestration, the fact that the strings and the clarinets are all playing together in octaves projects a sense of unified purpose. There's no dissent. The use of only the middle and low registers also enhances the serious character of this beginning. Here are two other examples from my own Seventh Symphony that we can use to examine musical character. Here, at the beginning of the piece, I wanted to suggest a noble but still rather warm character. The foreground, the calm legato melody in the horn, gives a sense of openness or freedom. The singing legato accompaniment in the violas and celli adds warmth. The flute counterpoint enriches the horn line. Tempo is moderate, no rushing. Let's listen. Later, I wanted to create a lot of energy in an excited build-up to the main climax. So the orchestration choices here were very different. The rising staccato line in the violins that starts here creates momentum. It combines with an important energetic theme in the lower strings and bassoons. The variety of articulation in this theme, with its offbeat accents, creates tension. The horns add fullness in the background. In measure 306, the upper strings speed up with the trill. The woodwind and the xylophone take over the mostly staccato line, and then the woodwinds also start to trill in measure 308. Now the percussion arrive. Their crescendo can achieve a dynamic intensity that the rest of the orchestra can't equal. At the climax in measure 309, the energetic, accented theme in the brass is accompanied by fast, cascading scales in the upper woodwinds and strings. The climatic moment is marked by a cymbal crash and the arrival of a new sound never before heard in this movement, the glockenspiel. The orchestra now fills out its entire range from the lowest to the highest. Let's listen. See how much orchestration contributes to the build-up and its culmination. To get used to thinking in this way, I often suggest that students take a notebook and label each page with a simple character word, like playful, or sad, heroic, or restless. Then on that page, list everything you can think of that would suggest that character, not just in the orchestration, but also tempo, harmony, and so on. This is the character glossary. As an example, let's imagine the page for playful. It might look something like this. 
orchestration, light with some surprises, piccolo or other high woodwind, pizzicato strings, maybe marimba or xylophone. Dynamics on the quiet side, perhaps with a sudden surprise. Articulation, light, probably staccato. Harmony, not too dissonant, perhaps with some surprises. Register, middle to high. There's lots of room for other possibilities here, and sometimes we could even do something a bit unusual. For example, I could even imagine a passage for double basses that would sound playful, say light pizzicato with some rhythmic surprises. The main idea here is to be always thinking of the desired musical character when making these decisions. Once you have your first character glossary set up, you can always add to it. For example, when you hear some music you find very convincing, take a note of how the composer achieved the character in question. These aren't simple recipes, but rather a way of thinking about the expressive side of the music. And by the way, not all musical characters have words. Many complex emotional states that are hard to describe in words can be musically expressed. The words are only a starting point. But it's very useful to get into the habit of thinking about orchestration and the other dimensions of music in this way. Again, it's not a matter of learning some prefabricated recipes. Real craftsmanship simply means using all the resources at your disposal to make the music as expressive as possible. Often in music that is not successful, the composer has simply not used everything available to get the intended character, so the result is just tepid. An example would be a climax that has nothing new to the orchestration. Or the composer may have, without thinking, done something that actually weakens the result, like removing instruments during a crescendo. Craftsmanship means knowing what you're doing with all the musical dimensions. That's why I called this course Applied Orchestration.